As you know, Labor Premier of Victoria, Daniel Andrews, has presided over disastrous mismanagement of the coronavirus pandemic, leading to almost 500 deaths in his state and heavy-handed responses that have created deep social and economic trauma. But he's fronted up at daily media conferences and, in the main, didn't face much tough questioning until more recently, when some journos have turned the screws on him. Is it irresponsible of you to jump to conclusions and let Victorians believe that far more people were breaching self-isolation and potentially spreading this virus when that was not the case? I think you've answered your question in the way you framed it. I indicated they weren't at home. Why did you make that such a big part of your announcement during Stage 4 lockdown instead of, say, acknowledging your government's failures in hotel quarantine? Oh, so that's the real question. I'm sorry, I was building up to that. Why did you blame Victorians on the day you were announcing stage four lockdown? I, I didn't do any such thing. And but if you... you say each of us knows someone who has not yeah. been following the rules as well as they yep. should have, and you did use the word um, that you were frustrated that such a large majority of people were not following the rules. So I, I understand that you don't like the question, but there is a valid point that you were blaming Victorians. No, there's no, not a question of whether I like the question or not. Um, that, that's not... That's completely irrelevant. For their trouble, for doing their professional duty, these journalists were attacked mercilessly on social media, the usual vile, sexist, abusive pile-on from the Twitter left. We can't show you the worst, but here's some examples. Rachel Karen Baxendale and Alex Karen White are not journos, just Murdoch bitches out to get rid of Dan Andrews, said the aptly named Land of Stupidity. While self-named Rational Bitch complained about Andrews having to put up with win bitches in these press conferences. And Ash Lay said he saw a press conference and, to be honest, the journos all sounded like the worst rabid Karens. I wish Dan would have said, first of all, F-U-C's next question. Reacting to this, Sky's Gabriella Power. Some of people were attacking journalists on Twitter, were saying really sexist, horrible, abusive comments. Mm. One, one journalist got death threats for mm. doing her job. Some people who were abusing journalists for going too hard on Premier Daniel Andrews just don't really realise, mm. one, how it works or what the alternative is, because mm. the alternative is very dangerous. If they would just like us to say nothing or just ask questions that they would like, then that doesn't really help anything. If Parliament's not sitting, who's holding the, the politicians Correct. to account? Spot on. The Australian's Rachel Baxendale found the abuse so unsettling she temporarily deleted her Twitter app. Journalists should never be above criticism, she said, and I'm always willing to hear it if it's constructive, but no one should face relentless personal abuse for doing their job. Hear, hear. Now, we've been on about this foul behaviour here on this program for a long while, for years, in fact. It's been particularly rancid towards women on the right of politics or working for non-leftist media organisations. But last month, the ABC's Media Watch finally cottoned on to this and host Paul Barry made this promise. Personally, I reckon naming and shaming is the only way. And if Twitter won't do it, others have to. So, watch this space and we'll see what we can do. Oh, well, when it comes to the treatment handed out to these female journalists in Melbourne, Barry and Media Watch have been silent. In fact, Barry has been more interested in trying to create media pylons against Johannes Leek, for instance, or even callously and inconceivably fueling flippant and cruel jokes about Kellyanne Conway and her family after the adviser to President Donald Trump quit her job to deal with a teenage child and family crisis. Great reality TV show, says Barry. Still, not everyone at the ABC was so callous. Radio National presenter Patricia Carvelis, who worked with Baxendale at The Australian in the past, tweeted in support. When I tweeted about Rachel Baxendale, I knew I'd be trolled and attacked, Carvelis lamented, because that's the hyper-partisan way this works. Journalists shouldn't seek to be popular. Even loopy left commentator Margot Kingston stood up for the sisterhood and journalism. She said Baxendale's questions were spot on and made the obvious points that the Andrews government had failed in its core duty of care over quarantine. He must know what went wrong and his refusal to tell the citizens is unconscionable, she said. Leading ABC online opinionista Jonathan Green could not be so objective. Where this sometimes gets awkward, 
However, he tweeted, is where the journalism itself is ideologically driven. There are examples of this. Yes, there are examples of this, Jonathan. But what about author, feminist and former Commissioner for Equal Opportunity, Moira Rayner, who tweeted to Baxendale last weekend, so you won't be shrieking repetitively at the Premier anymore then? Good. Shrieking? The hypocrisy is extraordinary. Imagine if a man accused a leftist woman of shrieking. But for peak hypocrisy, go no further than the mad green left feminist activists at, at mad effing witches who accuse others of bias. This is why we are so angry with the press, they tweeted earlier this month. The decision to actively undermine Andrew's messaging is political and has nothing to do with health and lives. Morrison is actively conspiring to kill Victorians to win an election. What hope have journalists got of probing for truth and accountability if they take any notice of this sort of hateful bile? Best to stay right away from social media, in my view. Whatever is right on Twitter is wrong in the real world. Whatever is popular on Twitter will be at odds with the values of real, honest human beings.